Hello again. We're going to start by graphing the inverse variation type problems that we already modeled. Uh, we did a brief introduction to that, now we're going to go ahead and graph them. And I put up two examples, y equals 1 over x and y equals negative 1 over x to see what actually happens here. Now these are very fascinating functions and they actually give you a better idea of what happens when you're working with uh, aspects of limits, which is a great way to introduce concepts in calculus. And it can also explain why certain limits are undefined as opposed to anything in particular, unless you get very specific on it. But that's a little ahead of what we're talking about. But we are going to talk about horizontal and vertical asymptotes as well as what we're talking about here. So I've got uh, graph y equals 1 over x. Okay, so if I substitute a negative 2 here, 1 over negative 2, and I'm going to do this in black, is negative 0 0.5. If I substitute a negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. If I substitute in 0, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And this is actually really cool. I'll just put UND for undefined. 1 divided by 1 is 1, and 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. So when I substitute in the values, here's what I get. I get negative 2 and 0 0.5. Excuse me. Negative 0 0.5. Negative 1, negative 1. And then I get 0 undefined, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I get 1 comma 1, and I get 2, 0 0.5. And students are a little concerned about what goes on here, and they probably should be. But before we get to that, let's talk about this 0 point right here, which is undefined. Um, as I get closer and closer to 0 from this side, what happens is my values uh, uh, become extremely low. And as I get further away, they become, uh, they get, well, this one gets uh, steadily closer to the y-axis, pardon me, and this one gets steadily closer to the x-axis, i.e., if I plugged in negative 10, this would be 1 over negative 10, which is negative 0.1111. So what's really happening here is that the y values uh, seem to be getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis as I drift this way. But... As I come this way, as I, as I get closer this way, they uh, drift closer and closer towards the y-axis. And you can go ahead and try plugging this into a calculator if you wanted to. But if I did 1 divided by uh, negative, um, that's a little hard to explain without showing you. 1 divided by negative 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01, what ends up happening is the value is negative 100. If I do 1 divided by negative 1 over 10, the value is negative 10. So what, what's happening is that this value is skyrocketing downwards. Well, I guess uh, the proper word would be plunging, not skyrocketing. So what's happening is the graph is doing this and this and this and this and this and this. And when I'm going this way, it's going like that, getting ever closer to the x-axis. Opposite can be said on this side. As I get closer and closer to 0 from the right side, what happens is my values, now this is where they actually skyrocket. As I get closer and closer. And as I move further this way, they get uh, progressively lower, but they never actually get below zero. Now what actually happens here is very interesting. The graph, this graph, will never actually touch the y-axis. It's called a vertical asymptote. It will get infinitely closer and closer and closer this way, infinitely closer and closer and closer this way, but it will never touch. And it will never touch the x-axis here. It'll get infinitely closer, 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 closer. So what happens is since it never touches a vertical uh, uh, point or area or line, that's called a vertical asymptote. And since it never touches a horizontal spot here, it's called a horizontal asymptote. Basically an asymptote is like a, a threshold. You can't cross the line in the sand. Literally, they can't cross the line in the sand. You will never cross this line. You will never cross this line. You will never cross this line. And you will never cross that line. They're called asymptotes. Very fascinating. And that's basically a uh, inverse function in its uh, most simplest form. So when we look at this, Our VA for this problem, our vertical asymptote, is at x equals 0. 
our horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. It will never touch there either. Our domain and range are pretty fascinating. Our domain, which I'll notate with a d, goes from negative infinity all the way this way to positive infinity. Now, there's something I have to say though. So, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity, but I can substitute any x value I want except for the value x uh, equals zero. I can't substitute in zero for x. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, excluding x is not equal to zero. Or including x is not equal to zero, pardon me. And our range goes all the way down, comes all the way up. It goes from negative infinity to infinity, except I can't use the value y equals zero. It just won't work. So it, it's here, here, but it does not include the number zero. So that's a brief introduction to that. And that's where we get into limits and calculus, but that's a little too ambitious at this point. So that's this graph right here. Pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, you know, can't substitute in a zero. Let's try this one. Negative 1 over x, it kind of works slightly different. We did black for that one, so let's do blue. If I substitute in negative 2, negative 1 divided by negative 2 is 0 0.5. If I substitute in negative 1, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. Undefined in the denominator when I substitute in 0. This one is negative 1. This is negative 0 0.5. So when I graph that, I'm at negative 2, 0 0.5. I'm going to erase this. Negative 1, 1. 0 undefined. 1 comma negative 1. And 2, 0 0.5. Now, when I keep substituting in bigger and bigger and bigger values for the x, what happens is it gets closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it never touches. So it kind of goes like this. And as I substitute in smaller and smaller values for x as it approaches zero, what ends up happening is it's negative one divided by you know, one tenth, which is negative ten. Negative one divided by one over a hundred, which is negative a hundred, and so on and so forth. That's actually the one time I liked using a graphing calculator because I could compute that in my table function which I don't have right now because I rarely use calculators anyways. So the graph looks like that. It's basically a mirror of this one, and this one's going to be a mirror on this side. So the vertical asymptote for this one is still the same. Never touches. It will never touch this axis. So the vertical asymptote is at x equals zero. The horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero. The domain and range are exactly the same. Not including zero in the range. Not including zero. Pretty fascinating stuff. It's its parent function of sorts is uh, y equals 1 over x. There is actually an easy way to figure out uh, domain and range, uh, excuse me, not domain and range, but vertical and horizontal asymptotes, which I'll get to momentarily. For right now, that's the basic premise of what's going on. Yeah. Have a good day for right now. Goodbye.